Hey guys, Sensei Tom down here at Toro Martial Arts Academy. In this video, we're going to be looking at the self-defense technique for the blue and black belt level in our jiu-jitsu curriculum. All right, let's get started. We've got a lot on this one. Full Nelson escape. I'm going to treat these almost exactly like the bear hug escape with the arms trapped. So the technique is pretty similar. She's got the full Nelson on. She comes under the, underneath. She's kind of pushing my head forward. Number one, and most important, is I want to make sure I don't get my head pushed down real far. So to prevent that, I bring my hands together and I put the back of my hand against my forehead. That way, as she pushes my head down, I can kind of push back against her hands, and that way it doesn't crank my, my neck down too far. Aside from that, it's almost exactly identical to the bear hug escape with the arms pinned. I drop in my sumo squat, I step around behind, and then I bend, and I pick up the legs for the takedown. Okay? And then the same variation would apply if I were unable to break the grip and bend down. So same thing, she's got the full Nelson, I cover the head so I don't get my neck crank down, drop down, step around. If I'm unable to reach down to break the grip because if her arms are real strong, I may not be able to even reach the knees if I can't break the grip. From here, same as before, sitting rear takedown. She'll have to break her grip to break the fall. And then from here again, come up, side control. I can pop up, knee on belly, couple strikes, and I can move on. Or I can stay on the ground and control the person. So it's almost exactly the same as the bear hug escape with the addition of this step so that I can keep my neck from getting cranked down, okay? Next one, rear choke escape number two. So now she's around the neck, same thing. Last time we looked at the step around and back leg sweep. This time, as I start that motion, she kind of pulls me back in. I'm unable to turn away. Maybe they're just too strong for me to rotate that way. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip out the back, out the other side. Still maintaining control here, keeping her arm tight against my chest. Now my opposite leg is gonna step across and I rotate my chest down to the floor. Here, this way. Her arm is still glued to my chest. Once I'm here, I slip my head out the hole, grab over the top of the shoulder, control the neck, and then from here I can throw the knee if I want. I don't have to. Let me show you that from this angle again. So she's got the neck wrap. Go here. My first one, I tried to rotate this way, but I was unable to make that work for one reason or another. So I step behind myself here, and then I rotate belly down this way. If there's enough space for my head to slip out the hole, then I just control and rotate this way so you can see that better. My head slips out, I take my arm, I don't pull it out, I keep it underneath, and I just grab on top of her shoulder. And then I grab the neck to control, and again, I can throw the knee there, okay? Sometimes that will turn into a side headlock. Let's say I start that motion, and as I'm rotating, I get caught here. That's okay. I just turn that into a side headlock. We've got lots of options for the side headlock escape, two of which we're actually going to look at right now. So we've already looked at a couple ways to get out of the side headlock. We're going to look at two more today. Okay, let's jump on this side, please. So side headlock. So we've already looked at the face peel where we take them backwards. We looked at the drop spin where we take them down backwards. For this, these two variations, one is where she's pulling my head down so far that I'm unable to reach the face. I'm unable to take her backwards. If she's got me pulled down really far, she's bent forward, I may not be able to take her backwards. I'm just going to kind of use the momentum of her downward pull, and we're going to roll over the front. Let's actually back up so we don't go out of frame here. So once she wraps my head up, she pulls me down. Go ahead. I just go with her. Then I roll all the way over. And now I'm in the same position I would have been had I done one of the other variations where I take her backwards. Same thing. I step over, pull the heel in, frame, and then from here I can follow up with the same arm lock that we did before. Let me show that one more time and I'll complete the whole thing. So as she pulls my head down, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm not going to resist. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to let her roll me all the way to the floor and roll her over the top and I'll finish with the arm lock. So that's a great option if the person gets your head pulled way, way down and you're unable to stand up and peel the face back. One more option for the headlock. This time, as I explained before, I always like to grab the far side arm. Maybe I'm starting the face peel. But maybe once I get here, she pulls the arm back for the punch. Now if I can maintain control, I will. But sometimes she pulls so hard that I completely lose control here. If this happens, very important, come back one more time. Do not do this, pull it away. Don't stay here and try to catch the hand as it comes in, for you'll get beat so hard there, I promise you. You will not be able to stop the punch. 
This is the trick to doing this. Watch, super important. Grab again. When she pulls, look what I do. Shoulder to the punch. Elbow, lock it against the hip. Watch that one more time. When she pulls, I go to the shoulder. Look, I follow it to the shoulder. So that way when the punch comes, I chop into the elbow and then I hug it here. From here, I slide to the wrist. Push this out, I make a little handle here. This comes in the back door and I grab two on one. She's probably still squeezing my neck pretty hard. So I can't get out here, so now I use this hand. Unpeel, so I use my arm and I turn my chest to the side. And then I slip out the back, come behind her if I want, kick the knee, wrap the neck, and now I'm behind and I can apply a choke of my own. Watch this one more time. So I'm here, I'm controlling the wrist, maybe I'm going for the face peel, she pulls back. Shoulder, elbow, lock it on the hip, okay? If she lets go, I'll just slip out. But if she's still hanging on, slide to the wrist, come in through the hole, lock on, two on one. And now, unpeel, step back, pull, and wrap the neck for the choke, okay? There's a lot of steps on that one. It seems like it would take a while, but when you do the whole thing pretty quick, it doesn't take as long as it seems like it would. Let me shoot the whole thing one time, all the way through without talking, okay? So as she pulls back, This way, okay? So there's a lot of steps to it. That one takes quite a bit of practice to get each step down just right to be able to go through it, start to finish nice and smooth. So take your time with that. Make sure you get each step down because every single step is important there because they're trying to punch you in the face. So it's extra important you have that one down really well. All right, guys, spend plenty of time with those. We'll see you next time.